Hey everyone, Jinx here, and I'm a Genshin Impact math guy now. Alright, now I want to be very clear about this from the get-go. We're going to be talking a lot about Zhongli's nuances and potential issues, and this might lead you to think that we don't think he's a good unit. After he got his buffs, he suddenly became a very, very good unit. Zhang Li is a very good unit, top tier for sure. However, he does have issues that we think it is important for you to know about so you can make a well-informed decision on whether to pull for him or not. And no, I don't consider Zhang Li at must-pull level like Bennett and Venti because of these issues. These issues all come down to two big caveats for Zhang Li. As a support, he is an expensive support to run, which we'll be explaining in depth with some maths. This is largely why I so many whale content creators sing Zhongli's praise, because he is really strong with a lot of investments. And the second caveat is that he is ultimately the best at one thing, comforts. And no, I am not referring to his voice as smooth and sultry as it is. Osmanthus wine tastes the same as I remember. But where are those who share the memory? What I mean is that he will not necessarily make your clears faster, just a hell of a lot more comfortable. Now, in this video, we're only going to be talking about Zhongli as a shield and utility support. Zhongli is ultimately a very flexible unit with lots of potential ways to play him, including being a physical Carson Pike carry, a Geo carry with a microwave comp, even a hybrid DPS unit between physical and Geo. These other playstyles are ultimately outside the scope of this video, but if you are interested in them, we recommend checking out the Zhongli Mains Full Zhongli Guide over on the Kaching Mains website. Link to that guide is in the description. Alright, let's start off with just taking an overall look at Zhongli's pros and cons. His first pro is that as a support, his shield and petrify on his ult make him an unparalleled comfort pick. This makes him a very strong fourth unit in a team where your other three units already meet DPS checks by themselves. He is also super easy to use, he has the flexibility to work as a support in almost every team comp with some caveats. His universal 20% resistance shred with his shield is a broken strong utility with caveats again. This resistance shred can also last up to 20 seconds at a time and it is very easy to use compared to making sure you swallow the correct element with a Viridescent Venera 4 unit. His ult also has fuck loads of invincibility frames. The HP scaling in his kit makes him scale very hard with levels and more investments. He's also a very strong free-to-play physical carry with Crescent Pike as he is just the best Crescent Pike user in the game. He's also very self-sufficient because he does shred his own physical resistance, so he has very flexible teams. He also works well as a Geo carry with Geo MC for the microwave comp. He also can like using the pieces you have that roll too many HP substats. And again, with heavy investment, support Zhongli is a strong comfort pick with high amounts of utility for the team. As for his cons, without heavy investment, Zhongli either gets his shielding or resistance shred not both. This makes him a support you want to invest heavily into, so he is not very good at being a cheap support unit and he is very resin expensive to run. On top of that, his elemental skill can mess up reaction teams. This is especially bad in reverse melt or reverse vape teams. In these teams, you often have to put his pillar in Narnia so it doesn't eat reactions. And if you are doing this, he's just not generating any energy for himself or his team. His charge elemental skill for the shield also just takes a very long time to cast. And on on top of that, his ult also takes a very long time to cast. This makes it generally a DPS loss to use versus just spending the time on your carry or your highest DPS units. This tends to be true even with a damage build Zhongli and you generally build them for HP, not for DPS. Also, his resistance shred becomes a lot weaker if you have other sources of resistance shred like Jingzhou C2, Xiangling C1, Beidou C6, Superconduct and Physical Teams, etc. His resistance shred is also just weaker than a Viridescent 4 and Nemo support in mono element teams. The energy generation on his elemental skill is also gotcha, meaning that it is random whether it will generate particles for you or not, which can screw you over. Combined with the fact that the AoE on his pillar is pretty small, it just generally creates an energy deficit in your team. Now, as a carry, he is a great free-to-play option, but he simply doesn't have the same damage ceiling as hyper-carriers like Hu Tao, Ganyu, Zhao, Deluke, etc. 
And overall, he is just a very overhyped unit by Wales. He is strong, but Wales with Constellation 3 and level 90 get 2.5 to 6 times the shielding a C0 Zhongli will be getting. Wales also have so much DPS from their other units that Zhongli's comfort is more important than simply having a little bit more damage on the team. These two factors heavily bias Wales' perception of Zhongli, and your experience may vary a lot from theirs. And finally, ironically enough, at the highest levels of investment, aka speed running for the fast as possible times, Zhongli suddenly becomes not very good again. No speedrunner runs Zhongli when they are going for the fastest possible times. His ult is just a straight up time waster for them and he provides less damage to the team than alternate support options. Overall, the TLDR on Zhongli as a shield support is he is a very strong comfort pick that can get a lot of utility for your team. However, he is just very resin expensive as a support unit as we'll be explaining in the video. And he is ultimately a comfort pick. He is not going to be the best in choice slot for any team that is trying to push for as fast as possible times. However, he makes the damage you already have much comfier. If you already have the DPS in your team otherwise to meet DPS checks, he makes your runs much easier. Alright, last thing I want to mention before we dive deep is that Tuner does stream live on Twitch almost every single day. I do hang out with him in voice chat a few days out of the week, so be sure to come hang out. Alright, let's take a deep look at Zhongli's kit and explain why he is such a potent but expensive support to run. So, support Zhongli's elemental skill is really the crux of what makes him such a potent support and such a strong comfort pick. His elemental skill can be both tapped or held for two different effects. Let's cover the hold version first, as it's the one you'll be using 90% of the time. When you hold his elemental skill, you will place a pillar in front of you if there is not already one on the field and generate the game's strongest shield. This shield scales off of Zhongli's HP and also has a universal 150% resistance to all damage types, which just generally translates to it having 50% more effective HP. While this shield is active, Zhongli shreds any nearby enemy's resistances by 20 20% for all damage types. This is an incredibly strong mechanic. Most enemies in the game have a 10% base resistance to all damage types with a few exceptions. This drops their resistance to a negative 5% from that starting 10%. In case you didn't know, any resistance shred past 0% is halved, which is why Zhongli Shield only shreds 15%, not a full 20%. This is also why if you have other sources of resistance shred in your team, like a Jingqiu's Constellation 2 or something, Zhongli Shield is getting less of its value because the enemy is already below 0% resistance. This works out to a 16.7% total damage increase for every damage type on your team. This is an incredibly strong amping mechanic and is very valuable. However, this shred only applies while the shield is not broken. This is the crux of what makes Zhongli such an expensive support. If you don't have a strong enough shield and your shield breaks quickly, then you lose the resistance shred. Which means if you don't have a huge shield, if you want to keep the the resistance shred, you still have to dodge almost every hit coming at you, which kind of kills his whole comfort pick thing and kind of kills the point of it being a shield. This leads to the issue with a cheaper built Zhongli. You either get a shield and don't have to dodge as much, or you get the resistance shred, you don't get both. So a level 60 out of 70 Zhongli with a plus 20 flower hits about 15k HP. With a talent level 6 shield, this gives you a shield of just under 7k HP when factoring in its 150% damage absorption. In any late game combat, content like Abyss 11 or 12 or late world level weekly bosses, this lasts maybe 2-3 to three hits before breaking. And the shield has a 12 second cooldown and a 2 second cast time, meaning you can only get hit 2-3 to three times every 14 seconds if you want to maintain your resistance shred. So if you want to keep the huge value of that resistance shred, you have to dodge a lot still. Now for this level 60 Zhongli, if you instead have 3 plus 20 HP percent artifacts on this build, you're hitting around 30k HP. This puts his shield strength at around 11,000 which is enough to soak 3 to 4 hits maybe. While not face tank levels of shielding, it does give more leeway to not having to dodge as often. Now, I'm sure we've all seen footage from Wales praising Zhongli's shield as being OP and a busted thing, and their Zhonglis are because they're getting 2.5 to 6 times as much shielding as a non wales Zhongli can get. Now, 2.5 to 6 times more shielding sounds like a lot, so let's break down why this is the case. First off, the biggest reason Wales Zhonglis get so much more shielding value is because they have a cons to Zhongli. 
a Konstu Zhongli creates a shield when he ults. This not only consolidates cost times, but means that these whales get twice as many shields as we do. The next reason is because whale Zhonglis have cons 3, which gives them another 3 talent levels in their shield. Without cons 3, the highest you can get Zhongli shield is crowning it at talent level 10. So let's take a look at how strong Zhongli shield is at 4 different breakpoints. The first is a base mid-level investment Zhongli at level 60 out of 70 with a plus 20 flower, talent level 6, and no HP artifacts. This is also the level of shield that a full damage build Zhongli will hit. The next is the same Zhongli, but with 3 HP% percent artifacts between a Sans, a Cup, and a Hat. Next, we have a max level investment Zhongli for a non-whale. This is going to be level 80 out of 90. There's not really a good reason to bring Zhongli to 90 because it's not very resin efficient. We also have a talent level 10 shield and 3 HP% percent artifacts. And finally, we have a whale Zhongli with level 90 out of 90, talent level 13, and 3 HP% percent artifacts. This is the kind of Zhongli you're seeing most whales run for theirs. This whale Zhongli hits a massive 21.4 thousand shield HP and this is without a staff of Homo which a lot of them have an R5 on their Zhonglis. If their Zhongli has an R5 Homo, the shield strength goes up by 11% more. This by itself is enough to face tank a lot of the game, but on top of that the whale Zhonglis get twice as many shields do the cons too. Keep in mind that these are just with base stats, these do not have any HP% percent substats on the gear, they don't have a tenacity of the middle of 2 set, none of that. So your shield can get a little stronger if you have any of these things, but this is the baseline. When we account for that double shield uptime, the whale Zhongli gets 6 times the potential shielding as the base Zhongli, almost 4 times the shielding as the HP artifacts Zhongli, and over 2.5 times the shielding of the fully invested C0 Zhongli. This is why Zhongli felt strong to whales even before his buff. His shield is massive if you can afford to fully invest him to his ceiling and pay for a C3 plus Zhongli. Whales are playing a completely different game from the rest of us, so keep that in mind that their experiences will not necessarily mirror yours. You probably already know this, but I personally don't pull for constellations on 5 stars or even activate any constellations I do get for 5 star units. And I also keep all of my units at a more low to play level of investment so I can get a more realistic understanding of power level. So what this all boils down to is that if you want Zhongli's shield to stay up so you can get both a shield and the resistance shred it comes with, you have to invest in him and stack his HP and shield talent levels. And even when you do invest into him to his cap at C0, you still get 2.5 times less shielding potential than whales with a cons 3 plus Zhongli. And keep in mind, getting this C0 cap Zhongli is well over a month's worth of free to play resin. With this kind of investment, Zhongli is a very strong strong unit, but keep in mind he does want this high level investment while being a support which can stretch your resin a lot when you also want to invest in your carries and higher DPS support units. And again, even if you spend over a month's worth of resin to cap a C0 Zhongli, your experience will not be the same as whales with cons 3+. Alright, now that we've dived deep into Zhongli's shield and what makes it so expensive, let's continue looking at the rest of his kit. As previously mentioned, Zhongli places a pillar when he does his hold elemental skill, he also places this pillar with his tap elemental skill. This pillar resonates every 2 seconds for AoE damage around it, it also causes nearby Geo Constructs to resonate for the same AoE DPS and if you can get them to overlap the damage does stack. Prior to Zhongli's buffs, this did do pitiful DPS. However, in his 1.3 buffs they did give Zhongli HP scaling on his elemental skill resonances, so it's now a decent source of damage assuming you can keep enemies in the small AoE radius. Unfortunately though, if you are building a full HP Zhongli for as much shield power as possible, the damage on this is not that great. Now when you do have other Geo Constructs from other Geo teammates, this does give you a larger area to deal damage with Zhongli's ability, which is pretty nice. A very important thing to know about this though is that the energy generation on this ability is random AF. It does not create energy particles consistently. Between that and the small AoE, Zhongli tends to have quite a bit of energy issues and create an energy deficit in his team. Now this pillar also deals Geo damage, so it can cause a crystallized reaction which drops shields you can pick up. However, it's important to note that these crystallized shields do not stack with Zhongli's elemental skill shield. This is true for all shields. They all take any damage you take simultaneously, so their shield HP does not stack. These crystallizers also present another issue for Zhongli. His pillars can eat reactions you want on your carry. We don't want to go into a long explanation on elemental gauges, but the TLDR is that crystallized reactions will eat some of the elemental aura on a target which will eat reactions from a reverse melt or vaporize carry. This is because generally if you're running something like a reverse vape, you're aiming to get two vapes per one week hydro application from your Jingqiu. 
In fact, if timing screws you over enough, you can't even vape your Deluke like in this clip on screen. Every single vaporizer is Jingcho, not Deluke. This means if you run him with a vape Deluke or Hu Tao, a Melt Ganyu, a Melt Rosaria team, anything like that, then Zhongli will eat some of your reactions. This is actually kind of ironic because Zhongli's universal resistance shred is very good in these kinds of multi-element reaction teams. This generally means that in these kinds of teams, if you don't want Zhongli to eat reactions from your carry, you need to put his pillar in Narnia so it doesn't hit anything. And if Zhongli's pillar isn't hitting anything, it's not doing any damage and not generating any energy. This is a very important thing to keep in mind with Zhongli. His shield is very valuable, but his pillar is only I. Energy-wise, it's lacking, its damage is aight, and if you aren't careful, it can eat reactions from your team and lose your team damage. Now, Zhongli's ult is yet another mechanic that is really nice for comfort, but doesn't necessarily help your damage. It drops a giant meteor on the field that deals a large AoE of Geo damage and petrifies enemies it hits. This petrification lasts 3.6 seconds at talent level 6 and 4 seconds at talent 10 plus. This petrify is really nice for keeping enemies in place so you can have a few seconds of free DPS on them. This ult does have a decent base motion value and also deals additional damage equal to 33% of Zhongli's HP. Overall, this ult just doesn't have the same damage as top burst damage supports like Fischl, Kaya, Xiangling, Jingqiu, Beidou, etc, but it does have nice AoE. And unlike those other unit's ults, it is front-loaded burst damage, so it works really well with something like a Mona ult. The problem with this ult is that it has over 2 seconds of cast time. This is a problem because assuming both Zhongli and the carry are equal investment on full damage build, most carries in the game can deal more damage than this ult does over that 2 second plus period of time. And generally speaking, your carry will be more invested in Zhongli's because that's the resin efficient way to build your teams. And on top of that, Zhongli generally isn't going to be running a full damage build because you want an HP build so he has more shield. This means that Zhongli's ult is often a DPS loss to use even when invested. However, this is balanced by the large AoE on his ult and the petrification crowd control. Now, this long cast time is bad for its DPS. However, it is nice because the entire cast time is pure invincibility frames. This makes it really handy for easily dodging attacks. Ultimately, this ult is the same as all of Zhongli's kit. It adds a lot of comfort by locking enemies in place and having lots of invincibility frames, but it doesn't generally increase your team's DPS. If you already have more than enough damage on the rest of your team, that 3-4 to four seconds window of going ham on petrified targets is really nice, which is largely why whales like Zhongli's ult so much. It gives them 3-4 to four seconds of free DPS on their insanely high damage characters they have on their team already. And I know we've all seen the huge 200k damage ults that some of these whales can put on a full DPS build Zhongli, but what they're not showing you is that other better supports are dealing half a million to a million on their ults. But Overall, if you do have very invested high damage teams already, the comfort from this ult is really nice to have. Finally, let's very briefly discuss Zhongli's ascension talents. His first ascension talent fortifies his shield strength by 5% every single time his shield gets hit. The first problem with this talent is that the extra shield strength only applies after the shield gets hit. So the first hit gets 0% extra shield strength, the second hit gets 5% more shield strength on the remaining HP of your shield, etc. Overall, this means if you have a weaker shield that dies in 2-3 hits, this really makes no difference except for maybe eating up some of the chip damage you take when the shield breaks. However, if you have a very invested Zhongli with a 10 to 20k effective shield HP, this can let you soak an extra hit. Now, his second ascension talent simply adds the HP scaling to his abilities. It's what makes his old elemental skill and normal attack scale with a percent of his max HP. Alright, now that we've done the deep dive analysis on Zhongli's kit, what his issues are, what his strengths are, let's talk about his builds next. Let's start with support Zhongli's weapons. We'll be covering the basics of his weapons in this video, but for a more detailed analysis, check out the Zhongli mains guide on the kitchen mate's website. There are two ways to build a support Zhongli, either for shield HP or for damage. A damage build Zhongli will have a stronger ult which makes it less of a DPS loss when used. However, a damage build Zhongli without HP artifacts will have around 15,000 HP, meaning you only get that 7,000 effective shield HP, which at best means it soaks 2-3 to three hits. This leads to the issues that we've covered already where his shield isn't very strong, so you still have to dodge a lot if you want to maintain his resistance shred. Now for an HP build shield bot Zhongli, Lee, the non 5 star weapons of choice are either Fav Lands or Black Tassel. Favonius Lands helps shore up some of Zhongli's energy issues, so he is less of an energy deficit for the team and can help fund his ult. This is very nice, especially in reaction teams where you don't necessarily want Zhongli's pillar to hit anything. However, Favonius Lands only procs on crits, which means you either need a lot of crit rate substats or you need a crit rate hat. This will reduce the amount of HP percent you can fit on his build, which will lower his shield power. Now, if all you care about is as much shield power as possible, 
possible, the three-star weapon Black Tassel is your best bet. It has an HP% percent substat that effectively adds another plus 20 HP% percent artifact to your build. And being a three-star weapon makes us very cheap to upgrade. Now, if you have five-star weapons, then Homa is undoubtedly Zhongli's best weapon. It gives him more HP for more shield power and adds a nice chunk of attack to his build to help his damage. Vortex, Vanquisher, and Jade Spear are both still good options that do out DPS your four or three-star options if you want to fit more damage into your Zhongli's build, but ultimately neither do much of anything for his shield power. It is important to note that Vortex Vanquisher's passive for increased shield strength only applies to Zhongli's shield power when he is on field, not for his teammates. This is true for any shield strength passive like the bow lead 2 set bonus. For a damage support Zhongli, either Deathmatch or Blackcliff are generally the go-to options for 4-star weapons, Deathmatch is more favored because it gets a higher crit stat overall, and the lower base attack hurts Zhongli less due to the HP scaling on his abilities. Lithic Spear is also an option, but at R1 it's generally only coming out ahead of Deathmatch if you have a full leeway team. 5-star weapon-wise, a damage support Zhongli still prefers Homa overall, however Vortex Vanquisher and Jade Spear also still work better than other 4-star options. Artifact-wise, Tenacity of the Millilith is pretty much tailor-made for Zhongli, the HP% percent bonus from the 2 set pushes his shield strength even higher and adds a little damage to his abilities, and his pillar is able to constantly proc its 4 set bonus attack for the team. However, this 4 set bonus for the Tenacity of the Millilith does come with some caveats. First off, if you're running Zhongli in the reaction team, then you don't want his pillar to hit things, which makes the 4 set bonus useless. Secondly, even if you want Zhongli's pillar to hit things, it has such a small radius that it can be very hard to play around. Outside of teams with multiple Geo Constructs or having a C1 plus Zhongli, it's fairly hard to get Zhongli's resonances from his pillars to hit things consistently. In fact, outside of teams with multiple Geo Constructs or if you have a C1 Zhongli, I find it hard to recommend the Tenacity 4 set. Thirdly, you have to farm up a good 4-piece Tenacity 4 set. This is a new domain, which means that we haven't had a lot of time to invest resin into farming it yet. And this presents another issue because Zhongli works well with any random set of HP% percent artifacts, so it's questionable whether it's worth the resin to farm a Tenacity set. The 20% HP from the 2 set bonus can easily be made up for with HP% percent substats on random artifact pieces, so you can still farm an HP% percent set for Zhongli while farming a carries Witch set or Blizzard Shreya set or Noblesse sets for supports. Honestly, unless you are also farming a Pale Flame set for a physical carry you have on a team, we don't recommend farming for the Tenacity set unless your other teammates already have their sets worked out. It's just not very resin efficient considering Zhongli can just run any random HP pieces. It's also important to note that the two-piece Bolite set is basically useless for Zhongli. The Shield Strength bonus only applies to Zhongli when he is on field, not to his teammates. So for pure Shield Strength, they're just really isn't any other set bonus that helps other Zhongli support. If you do want to increase his damage a bit more, then both the Petra 2-piece and the 2 Noblesse Oblige do help out his damage output. This is normally the set you want to aim for if you want to run him with a damage build so his ult is less of a DPS loss. And in certain Zhongli swap teams, a damage build can be a DPS gain for using Zhongli's ult because you don't have a designated amped up carry who can gap fill time anyway, so the 2 plus second cast time isn't much of a problem. And finally, another useful but very niche set for Zhongli is a 4-piece Instructor set. This adds more utility to his kit by allowing him to buff his team's EM. Keep in mind though, Instructors only triggers when Zhongli is on field and causes a reaction with his Geo damage, so you do have to make sure that you're popping a reaction when he's on field. And unfortunately, it's unlikely you have an HP set of Instructors lying around for Zhongli to use, and it's pretty hard to farm. And even if you do have an HP set lying around of Instructors, it's locked to a 4-star set, so Zhongli will have a weaker shield compared to running 5-star pieces. Still, this is a set to consider if you want to push Zhongli's amping abilities as far as you can. Artifact main stat wise, if you want to run as strong a shield as possible on Zhongli, you run 3 HP% percent artifacts on your cup, your hat, and your sands. However, if you're running Favonius Lance on him, you might have to run a crit rate helm to make sure his Fav Lance can actually proc. And you can also swap his HP cup for a Geo% percent cup if you feel like you already have enough shielding. This will lower his shield power but increases the damage of his abilities compared to an HP cup. If running a 4 
4 damage Zhongli, I recommend running a crit helm, a geo percent cup, as well as still an HP sans. Technically, an attack percent sans will give you like 1 to 2 percent more damage, but the HP sans also increases your shield strength, so overall I think it's the better choice. However, at the end of the day, everyone has different comfort levels of how much shielding is enough for you, so while we can give these recommendation guidelines, the best thing you can do is play around with different HP levels in your Zhongli and decide what you find to be the most comfortable shield HP. Finally, let's briefly cover teams with a shield support Zhongli in it. This will be very brief because he is incredibly flexible and fits into basically every team in the game as a shield support. Most teams have 1-2 to two flex slots for fitting in a variety of supports in them, and Zhongli is very good in these flex slots. As you've seen in the background footage for this video, Zhongli can work as a flex slot in a Deluk Vape team, a Hu Tao Amp team, or a Ganyu Freeze team. He is also very nice in Xiao teams because of the tankiness and stagger resistance he gives Xiao while also being one of the only sources of animo resistance shred in the entire game. In fact, he can even work in tandem with a Jingzhou to replace the healer on your team if you have an HP stack Zhongli and you are confident in your dodging when you need to. Jingzhou provides a little bit of healing in case Zhongli's shield breaks and you need to top someone off. However, unless you do have a max investment Zhongli, his shield still cannot purely face tank endgame content, so you will still have to dodge quite a bit. It is also important to note that, again, Zhongli is a comfort pick for these teams. The Luke teams will deal more damage with a Sucrose or Kaya support instead of Zhongli. Hu Tao teams will deal more damage with a Kaya or Rosaria support instead of a Zhongli. Gan Yu teams will deal more damage with a Cryo or an Animo support with Viridus and Venera 4 sets. However, if you don't need more damage, the comfort Zhongli brings is very welcome. Another team niche that Zhongli is particularly strong in is as a support to a Ningguang carry. Post buffs, Geo Resonance now gives a 15% damage bonus when shielded plus 20% Geo Resistance Shred plus 50% more shield strength. This means that combined with Zhongli's Resistance Shred, you get 40% more resistance resistant shred for your Ningguang to dump geo damage on your enemies. This combo has around the same single target output potential as a Deluxe C0 with a Jingchou for a vape team. On top of that, Zhongli's shield is just very welcome on Ning because it allows her to soak some hits and she is a fairly squishy unit. This is also one of the comps where you want Zhongli's pillars to hit things because it won't be eating reactions, which makes it a good comp to run a 4 tenacity set on Zhongli if you're willing to farm up a set. The main thing you have to be careful about with the Ning Zhongli combo is that geo contracts cannot overlap with each other. This means if you place Ning's gate over Zhongli's pillar, it will not spawn her gate, which means you can't get the bonus projectiles for her ult. This is something that becomes easy to play around once you get used to it, but it is something you have to learn to play around. And another thing to consider too is that even though the Zhongli-Ning combo is strong, if you want more damage then Ning-Alfredo is still stronger. Alfredo doesn't offer the extra resistance shred and shielding and crowd control that Zhongli does, but he makes up for it by simply dealing a lot more damage than Zhongli can. But yeah, that's shield support Zhongli. Ultimately, he is a very strong comfort pick that adds some utility to the team through his universal resistance shred, but he is ultimately a comfort pick. If you still need more damage on your teams to push for faster clear times, he won't be adding that. As strong as his universal resistance shred is, basically any team has a support that will increase the team's damage output more than Zhongli can. However, if you already have plenty of damage on your team and all you need is that extra comfort to not need to dodge as much and keeping enemies in place, then he is unparalleled as a support option. Alright, thank you so much for checking out the video as always. I do apologize about this video taking so long to come out. I am still dealing with a lot of health issues right now and I'm basically just having to wait for doctor's appointments to happen. So thank you for your patience. Hopefully all this gets resolved soon. Now, if you did enjoy the video, be sure to like the video. Let us know what you think of Zhongli in a comment below and share the video with your friends. These three things are the best ways you can help support us completely for free. Don't forget, Tuna does stream live on Twitch almost every single day and I do hang out with him in voice chat a few days out of the week. And be sure to follow us over on Twitter, the at JinxMathlos is my personal account where I post updates about myself as well as various things I'm working on, and the at JinxTuner is the company account run by Tuna. And be sure to come check out our Discord server, the Mathlos Nest, really great group of people over there, all enjoying Genshin together. Finally, none of this will be possible without the generosity of our patrons. I do say this every video, and I'm gonna keep saying it every video, y'all the best. Alright, be sure to check out the description for links to various things like the Zhongli main Zhongli guide, and be sure to hit that subscribe subscribe button and notification bell to know about any of our new videos as soon as they come out. Happy waifu hunting whalers, we'll see you in the next one. Bye!